The case today is a 73-year-old man who presented to his primary care physician for a scheduled annual checkup, complaining of mild fatigue and occasional night sweats. He had a past medical history notable for hypertension, but this was medically controlled. On physical exam, he was noted to have palpable axillary and right-sided cervical lymphadenopathy. During his clinical workup, he had labs that were notable for a white count elevated to 48,000 with lymphocytes comprising 72% of that. ANC was within normal limits at 3,700. His hemoglobin was 9.4, platelets were low at 100,000. LDH was within normal limits at 240. On flow cytometry sent for workup of the lymphocytosis, he was found to have a CD5, CD23, CD20 positive monoclonal B cell population consistent with a diagnosis of CLL. He was then referred and had additional workup of his CLL at the hematologist, including a FISH test. The FISH was normal for all CLL probes tested and also negative for translocation of 1114. The IGHV mutational status returned as unmutated. He was RISE stage four or Binet stage B and his ECOG performance status was zero. For frontline therapy after discussion of treatment options, he was initiated on full dose of rutinib at 420 milligrams daily his symptoms improved, as well as he had resolution of his lymphadenopathy. He continued to do well on the drug during routine follow-up. However, after approximately three years on a brutinib treatment, he complained again of increasing fatigue, decreased appetite, and on physical exam, he had return of palpable lymphadenopathy, as well as splenomegaly with the spleen tip approximately four centimeters below his costal margin. On other labs, it was notable that his chronic kidney disease um, calculated to a creatinine clearance of approximately 56. This case represents what's typical for many patients with CLL. That is, the patient was over age 70 at the time of diagnosis, and most patients with CLL have minimal or no symptoms at the time of their diagnosis. In terms of prognosis, we've learned with time that there's some key biomarkers at the time of diagnosis that can aid both in predicting the times that patients may have till they require therapy. And increasingly, these biomarkers are important in choosing frontline therapy for patients. In this case, the patient had a normal fish for CLL probes that were detected. Normal fish is considered an intermediate or standard prognosis. However, the patient also had an unmutated IGHV. Approximately half of patients with CLL have unmutated, and this is considered a less favorable prognosis. And as in this case, the patient progressed to requiring treatment. However, it should be noted that in the past with chemoimmunotherapy, IGHV unmutated also had inferior responses and duration of responses with treatment with chemo. We are not seeing those same differences, mutated versus unmutated, for patients treated in the front line with the novel agents, such as in this case, abrutinib. This is a very important distinction and again highlights the reason and the importance for testing of these biomarkers at the time of diagnosis or at minimum at the time of first treatment.